Hey guys, welcome back to World Mechanics. In today's video, guys, we will be putting a valve cover gasket on the Beamer right here. BMW 46. If you have a, a six cylinder straight six, we'll cover, guys, how to do that today. Okay, this one is leaking pretty bad. We'll have the links for the parts uh, in the description of the video, guys. Feel free to check it out. We're using nothing sponsored here, but it's very affordable. Victor Rhein's original German uh, ceiling products. We've used them in the past and we're pretty happy with it. Check out the oil leak that we have. It's it's quite a bit of an oil leak, to be honest with you. From the valve cover gasket, it gets on it gets on the exhaust and it smells terrible. Oh, okay, guys, first we need to open the hood, okay? And you can see that straight six cylinder right there. So let's go ahead and start on it now. Okay guys, we're going to support our hood because the struts are down, the shocks and it doesn't hold it. So we'll just uh, uh, make sure we support it so it doesn't fall on us. We'll have a video how to fix that as well. Okay guys, first we're going to remove okay, the air filter right here. That's the cabin air filter guys. So we have three things that you need to twist and you just pull it out. Okay, now we have to pull the filter itself. Okay. You can see, oh my goodness, check out all the leaves. We haven't cleaned our lately. Definitely have to address that issue next time. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have, okay, you can see four bolts right there that we need to remove with the Torx bit. Okay, Torx 30 right here now. And we're going to go ahead and remove, okay, the bolts. Okay, I think we have only four. Okay, perfect. Now we have to disconnect the wires. Okay, the ones right here. Okay, so let's figure out how that was now. Okay guys, so those you have two clips now. Okay, you just pull right here. Okay, there is a clip. And you pull. Okay, that's the clip right here. So you just pull this way and up. Okay, now we have to disconnect all the seals there. Okay, so we can pull, okay, the cabin air filter box out of the way. We're going to clean ours before we install everything back together. Okay, next you can see how much room we have. Now we have to remove that cover right here. Okay, and one more cover there. We have to get a small screwdriver now. Okay, that's our set that we use here. We just uh, need to get a small, okay, uh, flathead screwdriver. You're supposed to have two caps here. We have only one. Okay, one of them is missing there. And two caps on the, va on the, on the cover for the spark plugs there, but you can see the back one there missing as well. Okay, so now those are, uh, here we have two bolts with 10 millimeter socket. Okay, we're going to remove those, they're pretty short bolts. And you can see on top, you don't see them any leaks, but right there on the side where the exhaust is, that's where it drips and it smells terrible. Okay, and we have quite a bit of a oil leak from the valve cover gasket. Those are nuts. You should have two nuts there. Okay, like that again. Okay, two bolts here, two nuts on the... Okay, this cover is for the fuel injectors right here. Okay, perfect. Now this one comes in an angle, okay, like that. You can just pull it out of the way. You have to remove the old cap right next. Okay, and we are going to remove that cover now. Okay, put the cap back on so we don't drop anything inside the valve cover. Now, okay, right here. You can see we're, doing, we're making some progress now. Okay guys, next we need to disconnect all of the ignition covers. Okay, you just open them like that. It depends on the year model, some are uh, different. Okay, and you just grab and pull one by one out. It doesn't matter where install the ignition covers next, all of them are interchangeable. Okay, just important to install the uh, cables in the right order, just the way they are right now. Okay, you can see two out of the way, four more to go. Okay, and first sign is uh, we don't have a leak inside, so that's pretty good. They're dry coils, otherwise you might notice uh, 
oil leak. That's what we like about that uh, uh, valve cover gasket that we use, that it comes with the gasket for the uh, ignition goes for the spark plugs there. Because some do not. Okay, and we'll share the torque specs uh, with you guys. Make sure you stay until the end to make sure you do everything right. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. We learn from one another, guys. Okay, that Beamer right here will have probably 150 videos taking almost everything apart on a BMW 46. So make sure you subscribe. Okay, now we need 8 mm socket and we're going to remove the ground wire. We have two ground wires for the ignition coils. There is a small nut that you need to make sure that you do not lose. Okay, this is the nut right there. We can pull the ignition coil ground wire out now. There is one more for the other three coils there. Very well designed engine. Okay, and we dropped ours on the side, but we're going to get, a, get it with our fingers, so you can use a magnetic screwdriver and remove them. Now we need to remove the wiring harness, okay, right here. It has a few clips holding it. Okay, you can see, so we need to pull that one up. Okay, we're going to get a screwdriver again. Okay, you can see where the clip is right there. Okay, and we can pull those wires, okay, on the side, okay, like that, perfect. Okay, next, uh, if you get a 19mm, you can disconnect the uh, positive cable right here, but now, very important thing, we need to disconnect the battery first. And this is because if you touch it somewhere on the body, you're going to burn your computer, most likely. So, what we're going to do, we'll go to the trunk and disconnect our battery now. Okay, and you're going to disconnect the negative first. Always disconnect negative cable first. That way, if you touch the positive later on the body somewhere, you're not going to have ground and fry electric components. Okay, right here, we're ready to disconnect the positive as well. Next, finally, we can go ahead and remove that positive cable out of the way. Okay, not to worry that you're going to fry anything. Okay, right there. And check it out, all the wiring harness is on the side. Okay guys, so now uh, we need to disconnect that uh, breather hose right here. You press on the bottom and top and pull it out very careful not to crack it, okay? Because it's uh, really complicated to replace it. Next we need to disconnect the wires for the oxygen sensor right here. Because they're holding on the valve cover gasket, you just pull them out, okay, out of the way. Okay, we are ready to remove them now, guys. Uh, 10 millimeter socket, okay, and we're going to remove all the valve cover bolts now. Okay, and you can see this one is uh, actually pretty, pretty tight. Or oh, we need to charge our battery, one of the two. Okay, uh, never ever use impact to get them tight or anything like that. We're going to have certain torque specs. Okay, and ours will be according to the Bentley manual. Okay, let's get those loose. Okay, you can do the ones in the middle that are uh, the one holding the ground wires. You can see there for the ignition coils. This uh, seems to be original gasket. I don't think it's ever been replaced. Okay, you can see there is one more inside there. Towards the very last ignition coil. Okay, now we have two in the corners that are a little bit hard to reach. Okay, you can see them right there. So we'll get those as well. And the one in that corner. This is by the AC line, so it's a little bit inconvenient. Okay, we are going to get the impact and continue removing them. <coughs> it's important, okay, 
not to lose the bolts. Okay, we have the rings, uh, those gasket, gasket uh, bushings. We have those with the new with the new valve cover gasket. Okay, you can see you can just pull them out like that. It's very important not to drop anything in the valve cover when we remove it, guys. So uh, to minimize that, we're going to remove all the bushings as well. Because you don't want something to drop in the timing chain. Okay, this one is out as well. Okay, you can see how they come. Now we have the ones right here. And there is a specific order that they need to be installed in as well. Those are a little bit trickier there because it has a little bit less room due to the secondary air pump and if you have problem with the secondary air pump we have a video how to take those things apart and clean them and make them good again, make them run. We demonstrated on BMW E90, we have it on the channel guys, on how to repair guys channel. Okay, not much left now. And we'll see how stuck it is because sometimes they tend to be really, really stuck. show everything guys um, the video might be a little bit longer but you know what to expect because other people usually shoot a video and they skip a step something that gets stuck we try to video everything even if we screw up something so you know how to avoid that nobody's perfect but sometimes we make mistakes and we warn you so you don't damage your vehicle in the process Okay, those are the ones that are hard to get in the corner there. Okay, you preferably guys if you use gloves because that oil will get on your fingers. Uh, and first it's not good for you, second it makes your fingers oily and you cannot grab the bolts good. Okay, that last one is a little bit, a little bit tricky there. Now when you remove, you have to be careful with the breather hose, okay, right here. Because it tends to go back on the valve cover gasket, so you want to make sure that you don't break it. Okay, this one here. Now we have to remove all of them in the middle, we got them loose. Uh, you can see the ones in the middle are a little bit different shaped, so you know about that. Okay, I think we have only two more to go. Let's check it out. See if we have the seals here. If you can remove those, it's okay. Sometimes you won't be able to. Sometimes they'll be like plastic. Instead of being rubber, from all the heat, they will turn into really hard rubber, almost plastic. They will even tend to crack. That's why you start developing uh, valve cover leaks as well. Okay, and this one there is out of the way now. Okay, careful with that hose now. Okay, you have to pull it on the side a little bit like that. And it will be stuck. I'm telling you that thing will be stuck. So, Either start it on one side, but very careful not to crack it. You can uh, barely pry with a screwdriver. 
but you have to be careful not to crack it if you grab it with you and shake it a little bit okay you'll be able to pull it out you have the wires in the back you can disconnect those okay that's the oxygen sensor there it's disconnectable if you need to okay and this is the valve cover right here guys oh you guys so you can see the valve cover is out of the way now let me show you where the leak uh, is okay right here on the front you can see we have a little bit of a leak but check the back okay that's the big leak right there usually it's on this side because the engine is tilted that way and drops on the catalytic converter smells terrible inside the cabin okay you can see the you can actually see the leak a little bit better on this side there right, guys you have to wipe everything really good make sure that you don't have any oil before you install the new one all right guys check out now the uh, gasket there for the spark plugs this one is almost like plastic that's unbelievable how hard it is compared to the new one okay so you gotta make sure you pull them out good sometimes they will break in pieces depending how bad yours is okay and always have to make sure that you don't uh, damage the grooves and the valve cover itself because valve cover could be quite costly okay this one is out now now let's go ahead and remove the valve cover gasket as well so you just start it on one side usually okay and you start pulling it out again if it's like plastic it might break somewhere and come out in pieces but that's fine okay we're making some progress here okay that's the old one guys out of the way now okay guys now it's very important to get the silicone for valve covers a gasket maker okay and you need to apply only two little dots okay one will be right here and one will be on the bottom side okay right here this is because this is the timing cover right here and it contacts the, the, um, uh, the cylinder head and you can see that you have a little bit groove right here that groove oil will come out of it so that's where you need to always apply a little bit a little bit of uh, silicone all right guys we are ready to get the new valve cover now valve cover gasket and uh, you have all the bushings as well we will install new bushings okay and you need to make sure that you get it uh, right away you can see how soft it is compared to the other one it's all over the place and that's how it should be okay because otherwise something's definitely definitely wrong okay you cannot get that thing wrong it goes only one one way the way the valve cover is shaped okay just need to make sure that you press it in all the way it goes in the groove because otherwise it might fold and develop a leak okay almost almost all the way in now okay just finishing this side now right here perfect now go around and just press it all the way in okay we have to install the uh, spark plug gaskets as well again you have to make sure you, that uh, you get them right you can see how ours, is, ours are and uh, again very very soft rubber nothing compared to the old ones okay and this one here as well do not install the bushings we will need to place the valve cover gasket first before we uh, install the bushings but now we are going to install two dots of silicone okay black uh, gasket gasket maker silicone or they have a uh, gray ones as well depending on uh, which one you need okay ready to install a little bit you can see right there where the valve uh, the the timing cover actually meets the cylinder head if you don't do that you you know there's a small leak there and it's really annoying 
Okay, check again guys for oil. Uh, you gotta make sure that everything's bone dry before you install the valve cover. Okay, we're almost almost ready. Uh, right there again, the spark plugs. Just wipe everything. Make sure you don't drop anything inside the engine because that could be the end of it. Okay, we are ready to get our valve cover gasket. Okay, you can see ours. Got some leaks now on it, dirty oil, but we're going to wash it once we put everything together. Okay, right here on the front you have two grooves that go in a canal, okay? So you gotta make sure that everything is lining up really, really good there. Okay, right here you have two grooves, so you have to make sure that everything is good. Okay, perfect. Okay right, guys, this is the future mechanic right here. She's super excited about it. She even has her own channel. It's called Sessi's channel guys. Check it out. It's on the side in the recommended section on our channel. Yeah, smile. <laughs> Say hi. Okay guys, so now we need to get the little bushings. You need to install them on the bolts actually. Okay, like that. That's the easiest way to go. Because if you install them on the valve cover, some people do, they might not line up good and you damage them. So you always have to install them, okay, on the bolts. Just go ahead and do that to all of them. I don't want to waste your time watching us putting 20 of those or so. Okay, and you have to make sure that you have the washer and then the rubber bushing. Okay, just like that, washer and then rubber bushing. Okay, this is the last one right there now. Okay, so it's time to install the new one on it. You can see the old one how flat they are, the new ones are really nice. Okay, and what you guys need to do, you need to make sure that the, you remember the center ones are a little bit different than the outside ones. Okay, so all four here now. Okay, we're going to uh, install them and next we'll just go ahead and do the outside ones. Okay, let me turn the light on. And don't get them tight. It's very important not to get them tight. You can just start them a little bit so they don't fall. Okay, but uh, don't get them tight yet. We need to go in a specific order and specific torque, torque specs. Okay, so we'll just install all of them now. Okay, so now we'll just uh, get them barely, barely tight when they start getting tight. Okay, so we don't have to do all that turning with the torque wrench. Okay, and you start from the, from the middle and you go towards the outside, but now it's not as important as getting them tied with the top wrench. So, we'll just do the inside now, and then we're going to go to the outside in a cross pattern. And it's very important to use the top specs, because otherwise you can, you can break those things, and then you're in big trouble. Okay, we have the links guys for the tools in the description of the video that we use if you need to get something that way you can so we save you some time you don't waste your time and the part as well will be listed below okay now we go on this side a little bit A little bit hard to get you on this side because of the emissions there, the secondary air pump. Okay, the one now on top. Okay, the one there on the bottom in the corner now. Top one. Okay, now we have those here. Okay. 
And the one in the middle one. We'll be ready to get a top crunch now. Alright guys, we have the little torque wrench right here now that we're going to use. We have to use according to the Bentley manual 10, 10 Newton meters, 88.5 inch per pound. The converter I have open here. Okay, you can see ours. We have it set at 88.5. Very expensive wrench guys, so uh, definitely a good, a good investment for that job. Okay guys, we're ready to start. We'll start with the middle ones. Okay, check out now when we start getting them tight. The wrench will indicate that it's ready. Okay, right there. Usually we start with the middle ones. Okay, right there. And then we do a cross pattern. Starting from the middle, going to the outside. Okay, perfect. No matter how many we've done the, of those, I always like using the torque wrench because Otherwise, you might still have a leak if you don't get them too tight. If you get them way too tight, you might break a bolt, and then that's a bad thing. Okay, this one's ready too. Perfect. Now we will start in the middle. You can see all those bushings are now compressing. Okay, the top, the bottom one there. Okay, perfect. Okay, you can see how we do the cross pattern now. Okay, now we have to remove the extension there. It takes a little bit of time, but you gotta make sure you do it right, otherwise you have a leak again. And you'll be doing the same job over and over again. So better get it right the first time. Okay, this one got tight as well. Okay, now we're gonna do towards the back in the corner there. And uh, stay with us to see what else you need to do one more time. Because otherwise you might have a leak. Okay, now we need to do a little bit more on this side. And we just dropped our socket. Okay, we'll be hunting for our socket in a little bit. Okay, since we dropped it. Okay, so we need to do the one in the back now, in the corner. And we'll come back uh, again and uh, we'll do something else. We need to do one more round on each of them because the first ones that you got tight, they were, there is a possibility that they got loose. Okay, so we'll have to go again on them. You see. Okay, let's get this one there now. Okay, almost. You have a limited room there. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to do one more round on all of them. Okay, you gotta make sure you check them. Okay, perfect. Because the first ones that you did might get loose. Okay, so you want to go ahead and check each one of them individually now. 
to make sure that everything is good. And uh, it's not such a uh, big difference how you go the second time, if it's a cross pattern or not, you just need to make sure you check off them. Okay, for that click again. Okay, right there. Okay guys, you gotta make sure that you install the wires, okay, they're in the clips, because otherwise they'll get on the exhaust and you might melt them. Okay, now we can get uh, our bunch of wires here. We're going to install the positive cable here. Okay, that's a plus cable. Uh, we still have our battery disconnected, remember. Uh, we'll connect it once we're done with the job. Okay. So, we're, we're almost, almost there guys, not much left. Okay, this one, got it tight, got to make sure that you get it tight. Okay, now, uh, it's important to install your wires the right way now. They go in the clips there and we will need to uh, install, okay, the ground wires with the two little, uh, little nuts there. Okay, that's very important, otherwise your car might not run right. Okay, perfect. Getting those tight now. It's just an 8mm socket. Okay, and the second one now. Next, uh, what we're going to do, we'll push all the ignition coils in. And you just, you have to push them all the way in, otherwise uh, they might not work. Okay, so you hear that click. Okay, and get the wires. Snap them like that. Do that for the for the rest of them. Okay, you can see four more to go. Just the same procedure. Okay, push them again. Give them that extra push to make sure that they're all the way in. One of ours wasn't. Okay, and just two more now. Okay guys, the next thing, all you have to do is just install the cap, uh, uh, the cover there, okay, for the spark plugs, for the ignition code, the injectors, put the cabin filler and that's it guys, there, there is no need to waste your time watching the rest of it, uh, don't forget to connect your battery and thank you for watching guys, hopefully the video saved you some bucks, see you guys next time.